this episode, we're going to be looking at MCPs, and that stands for the Model Context Protocol. And essentially what this is, is an API for your application. And it can do various things, and it's kind of broken out into two different parts. You have resources, and then you have tools. And so we can connect a server, and then we can have a look at what we have set up. So we can list the resources, there's some users, and we can then see that this is returning a hash of all the users in the system. We can also go under the tools and list the tools. And we can see that there's a few different functions that's possible to do. We have a sample function, which we can execute the tool. And we can see that we got some kind of response. We can also create a user filling out their information. And then we can run the tool. And we see that the user was created. And same way for deleting a user, we can run this as well. And we can also get errors back. And we can even then use it within something like Claude Code. So we have access to these tools, or we can add a resource. So these are going to be the tools that we are able to then perform functions on. But then we could also add resources. And in this case, I want to add the users. So it's going to then query my application, pulling in those resources. And then I can do something like, tell me about my users. What is their average age? So based on that, it's queried the database, and then it's able to give us information off of that. And so that can be really powerful. But depending on how much you build out your MCP service, whether it's the resources or tools, you can have it analyze data and do many other things. And so let's say we want to create another user. It's one of those things where if we don't give it enough information, then it's just going to try to do whatever it can. But let's say, this person is Keanu Reeves, and they are 60 years old. I don't know their email, so do a deep search and find it. It's then going to ask if we want to run the user creation tool. We'll allow it. And so it did the best that it could. It's not going to violate people's privacy. And so we'll create another user, Dwayne Johnson. We don't know their age, so we'll tell the AI to search it up. It'll search up Dwayne Johnson's age. And then it's going to run the user creation tool again with that. And if we were going to our application and get the last user, you'll see that it created the user just as we would expect. And so that's really cool. It can also be really dangerous. So you do have to be careful. And you want to make sure that you have the appropriate safeguards within your application. And that's what we're going to be looking at in this episode is how we can expose data from our application in the form of an MCP service API. And again, it can be extremely powerful where maybe you don't even want to have a chat interface, but it's something where you have a search within your application or some kind of input box. And maybe you're tracking the books that you read or how much you've read each day. And you could just tell this tool or this chat box that you read a certain book. You're on page 30 and you can instruct it to then research the book, the author, and all of its information, and even some cover art. So the user doesn't have to manage any of that, but instead they can just focus on the purpose of the application, and that is just recording their books. So that can be a neat way to use AI so that the user is able to focus on the purpose of why they're using that application and not have to jump through all of the hoops that they would maybe normally have to go through. And so we'll first start out by adding a gem, and that's going to be the fast, dash MCP. We can then run the bin rails generate fast underscore MCP colon install. And that's going to install a bunch of stuff for us. We're going to get a config initializer. And then under the app directory, we're going to get tools and resources. And it's going to generate some sample resources for us. We do need some data to work with. So let's go ahead and generate a model for our users. And we'll have a name, an email, and an age, which will make an integer. After that's done, we'll go ahead and migrate the database. And so let's first start off under the app folder and let's look at what was created. We had that resources with an application resource, which is just blank, but it inherits from the action resource base. And then it created a sample resource. So this sample resource is where we're going to be gathering information from the system. It has its own DSL where you can give the endpoint, the resource name, a description, and the MIME type. But then it's going to expect a content. And this is where 
you can provide it all of the information it needs for this particular resource. And then under the tools, we have something very similar with the application tool. And then we have a sample tool. And this sample tool has a couple of requirements. It requires an ID and then an optional requirement for the prefix. So only the ID is required. And then it expects a method call that takes in the ID. It has a default prefix. And then it'll say hello or hey to that user's name. I just remove that first underscore name, change it to name because in our application, we don't have a first underscore name attribute. So next, let's go under the config initializers and have a look at the MCP. For the most part, you can leave a lot of this as the default. However, if you're wanting to expose this to cloud code, then you can set the localhost only to false. You can also set the allowed origins just so you're not fully exposing the MCP everywhere. And in my case, I'm going to use ngrok. So I'm going to allow this on basically just this domain because I am doing this. And when I start up the Rails application, I am going to have to set the config hosts and we'll need to insert in that domain. And I'm doing that in the application.rb, but typically you would do this under your environment file, like the development or production. But regardless, all of the other settings, I'm just going to leave as the default. And we can then interact with our MCP server if we run the npx and then the at model context protocol forward slash inspector. And this will launch a local service. And with this local service, we can also start up our Rails application. So that's going to be on localhost port 3000. And the path prefix is MCP. And then we have a SSC route. So in the transport type, we need to change this to SSC. And then in the URL, we can specify the forward slash MCP forward slash SSC. And also make sure that you're on port 3000. Once we do that, we can connect. We can list out our resources. We have our users and there's no users in the system yet. And also for the tools, there is a sample tool, but we're not going to be able to use that because we don't have any users yet. And so it's really that simple. And on something like Cloud Code, which does support custom connectors, we can add a custom connector. And I'm going to put in the ngrok address that I have. And then we need to do MCP forward slash SSC. Now just give this a name. We'll add it, which you do need to be careful when you're exposing this because I found when adding the custom connectors, at least for the Rails side of things, there is no place to add some security. You do have the OAuth. However, the FastMCP supports the authentication bearer header token. So just keep that in mind. But now we're then able to add from example our users. And I can say, tell me about my users. And it just says that it's an empty list of users. And so I can create a user in my Rails console. We'll give it a name, age, and email. And then when we come back, we're not going to be able to just now interact with it, we do need to reload that information. So we do need to add that context again. And then we could just say something like try again. And so this is really cool. And it could be something where, especially if you're exposing public information, it could be extremely powerful. But as you can see, we're exposing the user ID, the created at and the updated at. And that's because in the resource, because this is pulling in the data, we are just calling as JSON on there. We're not scoping or limiting this. So you just want to be aware of that as well. But let's say we want to create some additional tools. One thing I found with FastMCP is that you're not able to namespace it. So you may need to do something like a users underscore create underscore tool dot RB instead of having a folder called users. But that may be fixed in a future release. And I'm just going to copy the example and we'll paste it in and I'll update the class name. And so I'm going to say that we're going to have some required fields. We have the name, we have the email, and we also have the age. The name and the email are going to be strings. And then we can just update the description. On the call method, we then need to take in named parameters. So we'll have our name, the email, and also the age. And then we can call the user.create with the name, email, and the age. And then we can give some kind of response. And so now with this, we can go 
back into Claude, I'll just refresh the page. And you may need to restart your Rails application. But once you restart the application, now under the example, we have the user creation tool. So let's say we're going to ask the AI, let's create a user, but what information is required? And so now I'm going to say, let's create Morgan Freeman and research the other information. And so while it's doing that, I'm going to look at the Rails logs and we'll see that it successfully created the user. And we can scroll up a bit and we can see where we got that insert command. And so that's super cool. But it's also something where you do need to be careful of the information because, again, this is just AI generated. And if you're not careful in validating some of it, it didn't say. It didn't say that it's going to make up something for the email, but as you can plainly see, it put it as the example.com. So again, you have to be careful with the information that you're doing and allowing, because just as an example, if we were to create a new chat, and if I were to tell it, let's create a new user, it'll say that it's going to use that tool, but then it just created all of this information and saved it on the database without me even providing a name, email, or age. So if you do have mutating tools, then that could be very dangerous for your application. So you do need to be very cautious on what you're allowing a large language model to do if you're giving it access to tools instead of just resources. But for the resources, if you are doing something where you are locking it down, because again, you are able to set the authentication to true and then set an auth token in order to interact with the MCP service, you can build some pretty cool real-time dashboards with live AI-generated insights, and you can do some pretty cool stuff with chatbots and assistants. But always, again, keep security in mind to make sure that you're not leaking your application information. Well, that's all for this episode. Thanks for watching. For more videos, check out driftandruby.com.